Hello everyone and welcome uh, to the Initiative Order and tonight's episode of Delta Squadron Operation Lockdown, our um, alien RPG mini-series. Um, we are on episode 3, we've had a little break between 2 and 3, but we are back and everyone is happy, refreshed, relaxed and ready to go tonight, I think. Yeah. So. Before we jump in and crack on with the show, I just want to go through some uh, sponsor information and everything, um, and we have a, a cool little video to show you. So, um, to shout out our amazing sponsors that have been helping us out through the kind of lifespan of the Initiative Order, uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Session Zero Clothing, who are a d and inspired streetwear company. Um, really, really awesome t-shirts and jumpers and everything. Um, and if you use the, the word order at checkout, you'll get 15% off. And uh, next up, Norse Foundry, the artisan dice makers. Um, again, make really nice wood dice, gemstone dice, uh, all that crazy stuff. Um, if you use TIO15, that gets you 15% off at checkout as well. Um, Roaming Player Gear, our very own, wait, I've got, no, I've got a point that way. Got DM, Ray down there. Um, maker of um, uh, amazing well apart from all the amazing terrain he makes um, also has his own little uh, tabletop accessories uh, brand which has the, you've got t-shirts and everything you've got your um, dice tower dice tray dice vault combo um, and lots of other cool stuff and i imagine there's more stuff coming but we won't speak of that just yet um, but if you use the the code word carnaby 20 um, that gets you 20% off the Dice Tower Dice Tray Vault combo set, so make sure you check that out. Um, additionally, we have uh, Mithril Armory, who are our um, giveaway sponsor for tonight. So um, if you stick around at the break, we're going to be doing a giveaway, um, and I'll, I'll tell you more details about that when we get to the break. Um, but before we go anywhere, Mithril have a Kickstarter that launched on Monday. It's already about 800% funded but it is for their um, tin hedrals. So Mithril have been doing the tin 20s as well as all the other amazing accessories they do, um, but they have kind of looked at the feedback from the tin 20s and um, taken on board some, some notes and kind of gone crazy and done a full um, tin hedral set, a full foldable metal dice puzzle set. Um, comes in a flat sheet of metal that you uh, fold into a full set of usable polyhedral dice um, and they have some beautiful designs by some really cool artists um, Kickstarter launched on Monday it's only 23 weeks um, so you've got two more weeks after today um, and you get to choose like which designs get unlocked and everything during that and um, yeah so if you want to look at the Kickstarter we have our own initiative order web link for that so it kind of tracks that you've come from us and it is tio.mithralarmory.com that takes you direct to the Kickstarter, and you can back it, have a look, have a nose in, see. But we do have a little promo video by them, so we're going to roll that now. You guys can check that out, and then we'll come straight back. From the same team who created the world's first foldable metal D20 comes a colorful evolution. Introducing the world's first all-metal, foldable, full-color RPG dice set. Now you can enjoy a full set of foldable RPG dice. Designed with thicker, sturdier metal and in full color by our favorite designers, the two included sheets contain a total of nine dice. 1d20, 1d12, 2d10, 1d8, 3d6, and 1d4. They come in multiple designs, and new ones will become unlocked as we reach our stretch goals. Tin Hedrals, Foldable Metal Dice, by Mithril Armory. Really cool, really cool dice. Um, may have ordered several sets already. Um, so yeah, so check them out again. Tio dot dot com uh, takes you direct to the Kickstarter from us. So please 
have a look. Um, so, before we jump in, last couple little bits of sponsor info and everything. Um, we are ambassadors for Jasper's Game Day, so we would like to say, you know, please check out Jasper's Game Day. They're a charity that tries to raise awareness um, and prevention of teenage suicide. Um, all the links are in our description and everything. Um, we have been doing events with them and we're going to be doing more coming up soon, so stick to the social medias for that. Um, Monday coming, we have Vault, our Fallout RPG show uh, with an amazing cast, crew, overseer, everything, miniatures, terrain, crazy, post-apocalyptic madness. Um, that's our, our new weekly show on Monday, so make sure you check that out. Um, and then lastly, uh, we do have a, a coffee link so if you guys enjoy the show enjoy my amazing cast and want to um rather than tip the channel want to tip these guys directly then there is a, a coffee link down in the um, chat for that um, to drop them a couple of dollars you know a little bit of, a little bit of change if you've got any and it all goes it goes directly to the players so just want to put that out there okay so that's all the admin out of the way um don't want to leave these guys in suspense for too long you know things have happened so we will roll the intro and then woosah, breathe rub the ears breathe and we'll be fine so back in a second Okay, and we are back. So, to recap on last session. Well, to recap on everything. So, you guys are Delta Squadron, a ex-Colonial Marine Elite Special Force, now working as private contractors for uh, Whaling Utani Corp. And you are currently on a mission to retrieve some data that was previously retrieved by uh, another group of individuals um, pertaining to some something you don't know about. Um, but this data was lost after it was retrieved by the previous group as they fell into some sort of issues that caused them to have to put out a mayday call and crash land on this um, little way station out in the far reaches of the frontier of space. Um, you guys set off after getting yourselves prepped, went to a refueling station um, on the way, met some individuals, restocked, got supplies, and then went from there to this station, this way station. Um, upon entering the uh, hangar bay, um, you saw that the previous group's ship, the Oxocilia, or the Ox, was in there. Um, you managed to kind of repressurize the hangar, jump into the other ship and kind of search around. You saw that there was um, a corpse inside one of the hypersleep tubes with its chest smashed open, all the glass smashed. Don't know why, what happened there. No ideas what happened there. Um, and then you heard movement in another room. 
upon entering that room, there was a storage cupboard at the back that you heard movement in. Opened it up and found one Norman Garrett stood in there in a slight state of disarray. Um, Norman, having survived the void of space, um, being an android, um, previously unknown to his crew and uh, anyone else who knew Norman, um, you managed to get her back up and running, get him back up and running, should I say, um, and he became part of your team for the for the moment. gave give you gave you information that the rest of the crew were attacked by something that was on the ship. Um, managed to get to this station, um, get off the ship. But as far as he's aware, most of the crew died. Um, he believes Spider, the pilot, um, is somewhere on the station still alive, and she is the one who has the the data drive with the information you guys need. Um, to complete your mission. So, you ventured into the station, which appears to be deserted. Um, upon heading down the passages into the main atrium on this, this ground level, um, you found that it was in disarray. Um, obvious signs of a struggle um, and something going on, um, but no, no people about. Um, you did whilst there hear the sounds when Norman used his radio um, you could hear the static of another radio on the other side of a large bulkhead door that was that led into um, a big storage hangar um, on the other side of the atrium but you couldn't get in there and all the lifts weren't working so you guys decided to head up um, a service tunnel at the side of a lift uh, to get to the main command deck um, you encountered a couple body parts um, Norman kind of glitched for a second and fell back down and um, Lydia and Magdalena had to go and retrieve him um, after that you all kind of converged on the third level where the um, command deck is as well as other other areas of this, this uh, station uh, that you've not really kind of perused and looked at um, but you got there you went down the short corridor, turned, saw um, the remains of a corpse against the the wall next to the, the main entry door to the commander, which was closed. Um, you rifled through his body and found a keycard and managed to open the door to the command deck. Upon doing so, there was a door directly opposite on the other side of the command deck, and you saw a large, dark, shadowed figure dart past the door. Um... Upon looking into the command deck, you saw that it was littered with body parts, um, clearly of the the main crew of the ship, of the, the station and the command deck, um, had been dismembered and splayed across the room. You guys went in, Norm went in and shut the other door, and then you entered the command deck and decided to kind of get this place back up and running, get Norman connected to the mother, um, the main supercomputer of the station, um, which will give you better access to the facilities and information on what what is going on on the station. So Norman went up into the, the small supercomputer room just above the command deck. It has its own housing. Um, and with the help of Magdalena, um, you managed to switch back on mother. In doing so, all the computer screens started lighting up, all the, the systems started rebooting, and you managed to see on the CCTV um, a better view of the main areas of the station um, as all the lights had started coming back on. So the atrium, you could see the, the, the disarray in there, um, nothing else. You could see the ships in the hangar bay. You could see... Um, there was one screen that was flickering. Then after a while, another system popped up and then the screen started working and it showed you what was labelled as this storage bay. And you guys sat there and you watched and took in the site of this storage bay, which was um, not very much a storage bay. You, looking in, you could see that there was like a low-lying mist across the floor. Clearly something wrong with the atmospheric systems in that room. Um, there were some weird, strange, egg-like shapes littered across the floor um, there was this organic matter on the walls that you had, you had um, encountered as you first entered the station 
um, or like some sort of like carapace shell like substance put on the walls that turn them rather than rectangular corridors into more uh, tunnels um, that was all over the walls in this storage bay and then after a couple of moments you saw movement you saw several creatures moving around in the storage bay humanoid creatures um, some walking on two legs some on all fours long spiked tails elongated heads um, all kind of black bodied um, all larger than a, an average human we'll say from what you can gauge from a CCTV camera in a room um, and you saw that there were several of these creatures walking around in this storage area where these these egg shaped you know, a couple of feet off the floor um, were littered and then you heard the, the computer systems kind of churn back down and then all the screens went off and you saw the error message stating that the station had to reboot, went into standby mode and that all exits were now locked. Whilst in standby mode, the station had locked itself down whilst mother reboots. Now, Norman, you know having dealt with mother computers before, that this could take anything from 10 minutes to two days, depending on the size of the systems that it's got to deal with. Um, so at the minute your access to mother is limited whilst her systems are rebooting, um, but you do have some access. So you do have a bit of an idea of areas within the station. You, you now have uh, limited access to um, a map of, of sorts, or at least a, a location list uh, and an itinerary of where places are. Um, but yeah, you're all stood in this body part littered command deck. Systems slowly turning back on. You know that Spider's radio was coming from the storage bay. You know that Spider is the one who has the data files that you need to recover to complete your mission. And you're also locked in. And there are several of these creatures in that storage bay, at least. And you did see something dart past the door previously of the room you're in. So, what would you like to do? None of this looks good. We have to go down there. None as of much this looks good. None, none of this looks good, but this all this is the worst possible fucking situation we could possibly be in. This is oh, what the fuck did we sign up for? We just gotta get in and get out. We have to make this as quick as possible. I think we can do it. We just have to we just have to commit to it. I mean, there's only one way out of here and it's through that goddamn storage bay. So we don't have many options, do we? We don't have any options other than that. We have one option. Or we could stay up here among the rubble of body parts uh, and then wait for whatever that is to find us. I personally don't like option two. I also don't like option one, but option two is a little less preferable. I mean, if we could get these TVs back up and running, at least we can what's going on where going in blind is like a suicide mission more more so than already uh, Norman is there anything you could do to get these these uh, comps back up give me a couple minutes uh, I'm gonna walk up to the actual system and instead of typing it manually I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put like that my normal phone jack in um, and see if I can uh, download any systems or at least see if I have access to lighting, uh, locking mechanisms, and also oxygenation levels. Yeah, um, so make me a Comtech roll. Excellent. I will roll. Uh, okay. Excellent. Uh, that is two successes and one failure. No problem. Um, okay, so you kind of jack in and try and see what what you have available to you now that 
you've started re, re, re-engaging with Mother. Um, you find that the oxygen systems are all working fine. Um, you have access to those. Locking mechanisms you do not have access to. But what you are aware of is that um, all major station exits, so any exterior hatches, hangar bay, all that is locked down. Um, at the minute, internal doors, um, some are open, some are locked. Um, they will kind of shift back and forth between open and locked whilst things are rebooting. Um, and then once once everything's rebooted, then it'll be back into its standard kind of, you know, um, limited access opening. So depending on key cards, um, restricted areas will then stay stay locked. Public areas will, will stay open. Um, that's kind of the main things you're able to gauge. And then you've got an itinerary of um, what what facilities are on each level. And there are, there are three levels to this station. So you now have a list of what's, what's on what, what level now. So, on your current level, um, you're on level three. So you have um, the command deck, which has two entrances. The one you guys came through, which is just a corridor that leads straight to the lift, and then the other exit, which is where the the door normally closed, which had the the shadow pass it. Um, if you were to head out there, there are two med bays. Um, there is the fuel bay because this being a way station, it is. A refueling station so on this level there is a large fueling bay um, which has fuel tanks and then pumps that lead down to the hangar um, and then there is um, a restricted section just says restricted and so for the part of this basically if, if it's anything displaying on the screens i'm actually trying to channel mother's voice through me so it's using my my systems yeah. and the other thing i'm going to look for is very specifically am i able to change the concentration of the oxygenation in the rooms from like hundred percent to sixty percent, maybe along those lines. Um, two successes won't fail. Um, to a degree, you will be able to have that sort of control. Um, but as it stands at the moment, no. Um, but with the the kind of reboot information you're getting and looking at how the the speed in which systems are becoming online, um, you feel it's not going to be long until that sort of access to these lower lower systems will be will be granted um, and you'll be able to do that and so what i'll do is i'll stop the broadcast i'll look at vic creed and let her know i'll let them know if we set the room to 100 percent, all we need is an accelerant i don't know about you but the last time i saw fire in space it was such a beautiful thing well we do have a grenade and they're currently in the single room now Maybe we can limit their travel. I mean, that'd certainly be one way to take out a few of our problems all at once. The oxygenation's at ambient. It's nowhere near an accelerant. We'll have to wait still. I don't have access to that now. How long? It's unknown. Mother won't speak to me directly. Of course, it's unknown. So we're going to have to get there in the meantime be ready to strike and blow those bastards up as soon as we get to 100%. Is that what you're saying? We can. The other thing I can do is I can set it for 100, but we won't know the time delay. How, how can we tell once we're in the room? We won't unless I'm in the room. Fair enough. Well, there's no sense in splitting up. Uh, we're definitely safer in numbers. If we split up, we're going to be easy prey for whatever those things are. Hypothetically, if we did light them up, what's to say that this structure just give out altogether, Norman? My hypothesis is that the oxygenation will act like a fast accelerant. And given what I had seen with the previous entities, I'm hoping some of the explosion might limit the damage. Oh. It's, it's worth it. All right. Well, 
in the meantime, does someone want to cover me while I search a couple of these bodies for key cards? Yeah, I got you. All right. I want to go up to as many bodies as I can, as quietly as I can, and pick through and see if I can see some access cards or something. Yeah. And, and I'm keeping a watchful eye on everything around. Yeah, I mean, you're in you're in the command deck. It is currently one room, two doors that are both closed. Um, <clears throat> Lydia, whilst you're kind of perusing the corpses, um, yeah, she she pulls out a little piece of paper from her pocket, kind of looks at it for a second, puts it back in her pocket, and just goes, and then just starts throwing body parts around. <laughs> No problem. So, so as you start doing this and looking through, um, you manage to find um, two more key cards. Um, they appear to be um, one of them is the same same access level as the key card you got that gave you access to the command deck, um, and they were both red cards. And then you found a blue card as well. Is there a chance I can? Oh, never mind. I don't have. Never mind. Were we near one of the restricted access doors already? Um, from what um, Norman was able to get in regards to the layout of the the level you're on, if you go through the door that Norman closed, if you turn left, um, you'll follow a corridor round that will bring you to two med bays and then. Continuing round, um, as you round the outside of the, the station, it'll bring you to the fuel bay. Um, but if you were to come out the door and turn right, it will take you to the what's just, just classed as restricted. So we tried one of these, and I hold up one of the red cards, but we didn't find one of these yet. That's promising. We've definitely got doors we can try that on. I don't know if I want to find out what's behind all the doors, but it's worth checking. I mean, how are we going to get out of here? <laughs> Not checking, so. Yeah. Can I maybe give the CCTV system a go to see if I can do anything to get it back up and running? You can you can you can have a go. If you want to make me a Comtech roll, um, you can see if you can kind of hack into the the system and, and kind of bypass some of the reboot protocols. All right. All right. And remind me. So six is our successes, correct? Six is our successes. Perfect. Um, Everything else is a failure. If it's on, if it's a one on a stress dice, we then go into panic. Gotcha. Um, if it's a one on normal dice, it's just a failure. Okay. Uh, so two successes. Two successes. Okay. So you start kind of mauling with the with the, the CCTV systems and trying to see if you can get um, get them back up and running. Um, you have a go. You don't really see, it just says you, the most you can get is rebooting um, system available shortly. That's kind of the best information you can get, but you can't bypass anything. Well, I smack it. Damn it! <laughs> okay, and that's about all I got. Not with a hammer or anything, okay? Just my fist. <laughs> So, boss, what's the plan? What what door are we checking next? Well, I'm feeling a little saucy. <laughs> Let's try the restricted door. I think we'll cover the most ground there, especially if uh, essentially it's been closed off and others couldn't get into it. So let's give it a shot. Would you like me to remain behind so I can analyze Mother when she comes 100% online? 
I don't think it's a good idea to leave you here, Norman. Look, Norman, you're our only access to the computer systems as far as interpreting Mother and and getting her back online. I I would feel more comfortable if you came with us. If you're here, you're a sitting duck. And if we run into more trouble that you could help with, we need you with us. And, and also, else? like, we don't want you to die. Hey, we it's need that pocket knife with us. You know that, right? I understand. And I'm gonna go to the screen, and I'm gonna see if I can bring up a blueprint or something that shows the computer access points along to the restricted area, just so I have an idea of where I can get access to Mother. Yeah. Um, so in, in investigating that, you find that there are access points at every every door that requires a key card. There's an access point you can, you can jack into there. Um, and on some areas where it's, it's more of a, a long corridor, um, there are the odd kind of service point there where you can always um, gain access to the utilities. This is an upgraded model. I should be able to get them from the doors. I won't have to remain behind. And I disconnect myself manually. Get back into my wrist. All right. Who's got the key card? Lydia? All right. Uh, and Luke, you want to come up front with me? And we can cover. Got it. Kind of as we did before. I just kind of swing the uh, smart gun around and up, pushing forward. That makes my pistol look pretty, pretty, pretty harmless. That's why I have this. Roger that. All right, let's move out. Okay, so you head to the door, swipe the key card and open the door. This is, I will remind you, this is the door where you saw the, the the creature on the other side briefly. Um, as you open the door, it's literally like a three-step corridor, and then it's a, a T junction. Um, left is med bays, fueling. Right is restricted. I guess we go right. Keep your eyes about you, because that creature's probably not far from here. I'm also looking up. And down. Okay. Um, so as you all set off, do you guys want to make some observation rolls for me? Let's do it. What? Yes. And just a reminder, that's with the stress dice? Yes. So if you have um, any levels of stress, you roll that die as well. Um, a success on a stress die is a success. But a failure on a stress dice means that you go into a panic, and then we do panic rolls for that. I don't know why I just rolled a bunch of d10s. Uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> You're panicking. <laughs> Flip it out. Get it together, Baron. <laughs> so what do we get? No successes. A... One success. Two, success. two, two, and Norman got four successes. Okay. Um, you all see a corridor as you turn right. Cool. <laughs> and it continues on um, for a short walk, and then you see that there is a door on the right, and the corridor continues on and then curves round. I don't like that we can't see around that corner. All right, hug the wall. We're gonna go in. Uh, one, not one at a time, but single file. You know what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, I'll go first. All right. Be careful, Luke. Got the firepower here. All right. I'll go in your go. Everybody ready? Ready. Gun out. I push forward. Okay. Swing in around. So you guys head forward um, down the corridor, and obviously before you get to the bend, there is a door to your right, which is um, an access point to this restricted area. 
Hmm. Maybe is there a key card spot here that we can try? There is, yeah, there's the little control panel on the wall. Can I also plug into that part? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna also uh, see if I can access using my super user account that I had last time. Let's see if I can access what was restricted act uh what was restricted in this room. Yeah. So is Lydia going to swipe the card for access to, to open yeah. the door, and then Norman's going to try and see if you can get any information on what's in here. Uh, Lydia, you swipe the... Which key card are you swiping, red or blue? I'll try either one. I'll tr- Honestly, I'll try both. Let's do okay. the blue one first, and then we'll do the red one. Neither of them work. Great. just says access denied with both of them. Shit. Well, that's not good. Norman, are you getting anything? Anything that could help us get into this room? I got three successes. Okay. On contact. If, um, it, if it was contact. Yeah, yeah, it was contact. Um, so you kind of jack in and start seeing what you can find. Um, everything in regards to what is in this room, it's all um, it just comes upon the system redacted, redacted, redacted. Um, but you do get. Um, another schematic of the, the this level up and there are two doors into this room I'm going to see if I can access the lock mechanism I'm not going to open it if I can though yeah um, you have a go but it doesn't it doesn't appear to have um, the lock mechanism for this room doesn't appear to be on online as it were with the, the overall computer it seems to have like a, a, a full offline mechanic okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vic, nothing. Does the door look like it's in good shape or I'm gonna kinda inspect it just to kinda see if it's pryable or anything like that? Um, Looking at the door, it appears to be a sturdy steel um, sliding door. Looking at it, you don't think you can spot any kind of decent pry points on this door. Um, and looking, looking, kind of trying to gauge, you know, what if we sh- tried to shoot the lock or anything like that, would that work? Um, you don't really see where the lock is. It seems to be like it slides in and locks it internally. Well, I don't think we're getting in this door, which means we need to press on and go around that corner. Hopefully there's another way in, but it's not this way. Well, we may have a plan B, and I take out my cutting torch. So, I would love to do that (laughs) if I can. I like your uh, ingenuity. So, Mother, is this something that is possible you can yeah you can you can you can spend some time with your cutting torch to try and cut um a a way in through the door um because you can't see where the locking mechanism is you can't like cut around a lock but you could cut a hole into the door to gain access that way but it would take you a bit of time right so based on what i know like engineer wise what would i know that like this would take x amount of time to get through you would probably you probably gauge looking looking at the door and the thickness and everything um to get like a a, a, a hole big enough to say crawl through might take about 15 minutes all right so it looks like i can get through this in about 15 minutes do we have 15 minutes we can have 15 minutes if we cover you which norman lydia Stand behind Magdalena. Luke, you and I need to cover each direction of the corridor. Got it. All right. And I fire it up and then just start going. Okay. Let me just roll something quickly. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. No. <laughs> so, no. Um, you start cutting away with your um, cutting torch on this door, and you kind of work your way from the middle round and down. Um, and spend the next 15 minutes cutting through this this door. It's not the easiest door to cut through. You know, it is, it is, it is a thick door, so it's going to take a bit of time and a very slow pace going round. 
Um, but yeah, you, you kind of crack on with that. Um, and you're, you're cutting torches quite loud. I will let you know that. It's not like the quietest of tools. Um, Vic and Luke, whilst you guys are kind of on guard, you don't see anything. Um, you don't hear anything over the cutting torch sound. Um, it's very quiet. About ten minutes pass. Magdalena's on that last last quarter. Um, it's quiet. It's very quiet. And then you all hear the <laughs> dung as the kind of cut out of what Magdalene has done falls through into the room. Alright, looks like we can go through. And I cut the torch and... What do you see? Let's get out of the way. What Let's... do I see? <laughs> First and foremost, before I scoot out of the way. So, looking through um, the little hatch you've now cut into this door, um, you see a dark room. There's there okay. no 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 lights on, no ambient lighting um, that you you initially see. Um, you kind of take a second, your eyes adjust a little bit whilst looking, and then you see a bit of ambient light in the back, kind of left hand corner of the room, but it's obscured by something within the room. Okay, so I kind of turn my head backwards. So it's real dark, and there's just a little bit of light. It's obscured. I do have this flashlight. I defer to you. <laughs> Talking to Creed. I think before we open the full door to allow something full sized to get through, I think we should shine the light in, in the hole you cut. How big is the hole, by the way? The, the hole's big enough. It's like the bottom half of the door, so it's big enough for you all yeah. to like crawl through. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we open it, we need to find out what's obscuring that light, and if one of those one of those things is is in there. I'd hate for us just to crawl through as some sort of a feeding buffet to whatever that is. All right, I'll shine the light as long as I have cover. Yep. So, uh, I I kneel down with my pistol, aiming into the room, uh, kind of following Magdalena's light. Okay. Awesome. So shine it in. So you shine your light in, and you kind of you, you sweep from left to right and back again. Uh, looking inside, you see um, a variety of different sized crates, um, cases, um, like flight cases, stuff like that, stacked up on the left, um, quite high, and that's what's obscuring your view of the possible light source. Looking to the right, um, you see. Um, a selection of like tables and then like some some shelving on on the right hand side um again with like small cases and, and crates and boxes um lined up there okay uh and then i'll just turn to turn to the team just relay that it looks normal to me all right all right good well we made a way let's go in Oh. Good work. Yeah, well done, Thank Magdalena. You. Okay. So you all crawl through the cutout into the room. I'm definitely holding my pistol while we do this. Okay. So you go in. You all make your way in one by one. Um, who's the last one going in? Norman. Okay. Um, as you step, as you're going through normal, you hear a sound behind you down the other side of the corridor back where the command deck is and round that other side. But it's faint what? down there. You don't, dis you can't tell what, what the sound is. You just, you heard noise, but you couldn't discern what it was. And the next time, am I, am I have, do I have the ability to record the sound at all? Um, no, because it's because of how faint it is for away, you won't be able to pick up it. It, it, enough to, to make a recording. Understood. Understood. Um, when I'm in the room, 
Is there another panel on the other side that I can access? Yes. And I'm going to see if I can plug in and see if I can, uh, if I have access to turn on lights or anything in the room. And while he does that, I want to see if I can lift some of these crates and block the hole in the door. That way there's no like light seeping out or anything like that. Okay. So you all venture in. Norman being last. Norman, you kind of step in and then straight away kind of stand up, turn around, panel. Um, and you're straight kind of more on that. Um, I imagine Vic, Luke and Magdalene, you're kind of... Vic and Luke, weapons kind of scanning the room while Magdalene's got a torch. And Lydia, you're grabbing like the first crate you can get your hands on and put in front of the door. Uh, luckily, there, there are a stack of them just to the left of the door. Um, and you grab one um, and pop it in front of the door. Uh, Norman, you managed to jack into the panel and you're able to turn on the, the internal lights of this room. Um, when they kind of go boop and all pop on, Lydia, you're putting like the second crate um, on top of that to block that the, that cutout. Um, and as the lights come on, you kind of look at the crate and read what it says on the crate. And it just says in, in big kind of sprayed on letters, explosives across the top of the crate. Um, which was next to the door you were cutting through with the blowtorch. Just just letting you know that. Um, <laughs> just saying. Had to roll for something. Um, just that good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the yeah. skill, the skill. <laughs> so Norman, you I get the lights going and you all now get a better view of this room, um, this restricted room. As it was labelled, and you see that the crates that are kind of littered around the place all have military markings on. Um, getting a slight closer look, some say explosives, some say ammo, um, some have. Um, there are weapon cases. There appears to be um, a racking with um, military armor on that you're all familiar with. It's kind of the, the standard Colonial Marine combat armour um, sets that are racked up there. And then on the right hand side, where there was the tables and the shelving, um, you look at the crates and stuff there. Um, the crates are wooden um, and unmarked. And can someone make you me an observation that. check? You want a weapon, take your pick. A thousand percent I'm gonna start going over to the ones with the uh, at least does it look like rifle size boxes or are they pistol size boxes? There there is um, a plethora, shall we say. There are pistols and there are um, a couple that appear to be rifles. And the first thing I'm gonna do is access the combat file within my system to download whatever files I need to be able to use this weapon system. Pick up the weapon lock it, check the rounds, take a look at the aim, take a look at the sod profile, take a look at exactly if it's been fired before, lock it back in, put one on the side and take, if I can get the ones with the pistols, take one side of there, check the ammo as well, and put that uh, in my on my person. Yeah. I so. want the knife back. <laughs> <laughs> I hand the pocket knife back to Langdalena. <laughs> And can I check any of the unmarked boxes? You can. I do need an observation roll from someone. Um, but in regards to the weapons, the the pistols, there are the M4A3 service pistols. Um, there is a, a collection of those. Um, Rifle-wise, um, there are um, a stack of crates that have... Uh, there's about eight... Um, of the M41A pulse rifles, the kind of trademark Colonial Marine pulse rifle, in there, and there is there is ammunition for everything, as well as full combat armor, if you so wish to have it. I got one success on the observation roll. Okay. Lovely. Um, so, if anyone does want to upgrade their weapons while they're here, by all means. 
and I can let you know what, what the stats are if you needed. Um, Lydia, you head over, you kind of make your way now away from the door and the explosives um, and make your way over to this racking on the right. Um, as you kind of pass through the room, you look to the left, which is where uh, Magdalene saw the ambient light, and you see that there is another door over there um, that brings you in. Looking at its position, you imagine if you were to have rounded that corner on the corridor, it would have brought you around to that side where that door was. Um, that door is open. Um, and you don't see anything else. You just see that the, the, the door is open um, as you kind of pass around to the, the shelving where the unmarked crates are. So the other entrance to this room is open. Do we want to close that ASAP? I think that's a fine idea, just so we're not snuck up on. I mean, we might need a moment in here so we can properly arm ourselves for the situation we're dealing with. Or just generally gather ourselves. A, a break from absolute doom and terror would be ideal. Norman, you want to help me with this door? You read my mind. Yes, Norman, please. <laughs> and I make my way towards with rifle and tow. Okay, so who, who's going to the door? Is, is Lydia and Norman going, or is Norman just walking over and shutting the door for you? I'll go too. Okay. Um, as you both approach the other door, that is just wide open, um, you get there, and are you just getting to the doorway and closing it, job done, or are you going to just check the corridor beforehand? have to ask. I'd like to check the corridor. Okay, Lydia, are you checking as well, or are you just letting Norman check? I'm not going to let him go alone. Okay. So, oh, no. you both kind of head to the door and just quickly check the corridor. Um, it is, it's a case of where the door is. It doesn't. It's not a junction or anything. There's nothing to the right. It's just wall and then it curves around. As you, you do look to the left, um, you do see that there is a body on the floor. Just outside the door. Is it quiet? Well, the body's not moving. Well, no, I mean, is the corridor quiet? <laughs> um, you kind of, you take a second. You don't hear anything. How far is the body from the doorway? It is maybe three to four steps outside of the door. Luke, if I go out here, can... Can you shoot at something if it comes up behind me, please? Will you see something? Well, no, not yet, but I want to check this body. Uh, Luke, like, runs over there and gets, like, right in there without without another question. Doesn't even hang back. Go. Okay. Um, I'm going to check the body for name tags, ID cards, key cards, anything like that. Okay. So... Also, potentially cause of death. Okay, so as you approach this body, it is... Uh, face down, um, the feet are what's closest to you, um, the shoulders furthest away. Um, as you kind of step up and, and kind of lean over to start examining, um, there is no head on this body. Um, there is a, a splatter of blood from kind of like here round on the floor. Um, but where the head should be, um, you see a hole in the floor where it appears the the um, structure that the metal structure of the floor has kind of been um, split up and then kind of pulled back in can I go to the hole and, and see if I can investigate any further I'm yeah. also going to let Vic know that we were seeing this and there was two men. to which I definitely start covering from the uh, the doorway Okay. So, um, looking at the the hole and the corpse, um, you see that 
the the hull itself is as if like if you imagine like a, a sheet of metal and something smashed through it and it kind of splays up like that but then imagine um something being ripped back through it so the way it's splayed up the kind of corners have curled back in on themselves or something's been pulled back through mm. that's what you're seeing um that's literally where like the neck of this person is and where its head would be there is this hole there um the hole goes down into the floor um there appears to be a void down there um it is dark you don't see anything Something reach through the floor and pull its head off? Violently. Were there any ID cards or anything on it? Uh, there was. Yeah, it was. Um, he was. It was a uh, David Essex, and he was. Um, he, he just had deckhand as his um, position. But no, like, no access card, like, no... No, no, n okay. nothing, no. I guess he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean... A bit, yeah. Just be careful, because there's no, there's no telling if whatever did that is gonna do it again especially where you're standing. Yeah, I'm gonna come back into the room since I didn't find anything really on the body. I'm just gonna stare at the hole. Norman. Norman, what are you doing? Can I tell how many floors it's gone down? Um, just looking into the, into the hole without any sort of light source well you've got a bit of light from the 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 ambient light on the corridor um it doesn't look like it's gone down like to the next level um it looks like there is um not say like it's not a service tunnel but there is like a a venting void underneath the flooring um where cables would be run there would be ventilation shafts that sort of stuff um under there i'll turn around go back into the room and um kind of uh, relay the information as far as they may be into ventilation shafts if, we, if we've seen whatever taken this thing. Um, I'm also going to relay that uh, when I saw my friends, they were ripped apart violently. We'll do it again. Just like that? Just like that. I don't want to hear you screaming, so we need to get you all out of here. We're certainly trying the best we can. I definitely think, though, that we're going to need some more weapons to get out of here alive. I'm gonna go walk to the armor and just see if I can go ahead and start placing one on. If if also if there's any supplies, flashlights, chem lights, rope, if there's anything that we can find there. Um, also uh, additional radios if we can. Yeah, okay. and I'm gonna go back to the crates and search whatever I can. Yeah, Vic Crate wants a big gun, so. <laughs> okay, so my, she's my pistol. So what <laughs> montage? <laughs> yes, <laughs> pretty much. So, so everyone's gearing up. Um, there is weapons. There is armor. Um, you don't find any additional radios, um, but there are a couple of flashlights. There's the ones that like attached to the armor there. So you've got it. That if you watched Aliens, the second film, it looks like they've got like a GoPro, um, and in Covenant, a bit like that. Um, so you do have light sources. You have armor. You have weapons. You have ammo. Um, Lydia, you head over to the, the crates on the shelves that are, are not marked. Um, they have like a latch opening, um, not locked. Um, do you open them? Yes, very cautiously. Like, I want to take my rifle. Like, I'll, I'll unlatch it and then step back and take my rifle and kind of like pop the top open. And 
and point at it. Yeah. So you kind of unlatch this crate. It's only about like that big, um, but there's like several of them. You unlatch it yeah, and then with your small, rifle. That's what concerns yeah. me. You pop it, um, the lid lifts open, and you see um, that there is a sheet of paper with text on that's covering the top of whatever's in the crate. All right, I'll, I'm gonna go against my judgment and go up to it and try to read it. Okay. Um, looking at the, 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 the sheets of paper, it appears to be um, kind of like an invoice, um, but a lot of it is coded text. Um, there is, you, you managed to d decipher there is talk of locations, um, drop off times, um, pick up times with um, cash values. That's the sort of information written on it, but it's kind of like it's written. It's written in in English, but it's kind of like pidgin English, so it's a little bit kind of coded in a way that only certain people would be able to kind of fully decipher and understand. Hey Norman, do you know anything about this? And I'm going to see if I can go and grab, or see if I can read it myself and see if I'll decipher it. Yeah, um, so you take it and you kind of analyze it and process it and take it, it's going to take you a couple of minutes to kind of work out the, the different possibilities of what's written on the the, 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 the sheet of paper. Um, Lydia, are you now checking what's in the crate? I mean, you've uh, taken the sheet of paper off, so you can now see what's in there. Yeah, I don't want to, like, ruffle it up too much, though. Well, looking inside, you see um, small bottles. You Ooh, see okay. um, vials. You see um, syringes. You see um, oh. a very <laughs> large stash. A very large stash of illicit drugs and substances that are all within the 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 the, the general colonies classed as illegal substances Y'all have found there's a lot of it shit. great we can get whatever these things are high to death so or we can do a little and then the fear goes from here to here how do you think I got through three quarters of what I saw when we were out in the field? That's very true. That's very hey, true. Hey, Luke, if you do it, I'll do it. <laughs> Are you serious right now? I don't drink. What makes you think that I would do this? All right, all right, all right. As as She's your squad the answer. As your squad leader, I think it's best if we remain sober while we're trying to survive. But definitely put them in the pack just in case. Um, you. Got it. Hey, Norman, I don't approve of this. Just, just for the record. If we're cornered and gonna die, we I'm... might as well have a good time. But we remain alert and ready for anything. See, Luke, this is why I rely on you. And I just kind of like, just kind of, with a gun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, I go in. Okay. And are these all drugs that I would know as a medic what they do? Um, like if I read the bottles? These are all drugs that, as a normal person, you would all know were like a mixture of like heroin. Um, oh, these since... are straight up like drugs. Oh, yeah, these are, these are all oh, like full on. Cool. Great. Uh, uh, yeah. Like all the all the new synthetic stuff that's coming out of the the, the frontiers and worming its way into the into the colonies and creating these like drug dens and stuff. That's all what's in these crates. And there's a lot of these crates. Why um, in the world do they have these here? As you say that, Lydia Norman, you finish kind of reading all this letter, and you basically decipher that this is a smuggler's manifesto, and this appears to be a storage point for said smugglers. We may want to open up more of these boxes. There could be other things that we may find useful. Yeah. Let's check it out. Maybe get more information on why we're on this godforsaken station. 
or why they're storing drugs here and not the medical kind? Yeah. Smugglers. Yeah. Seems to be a smuggler's run. There's just more and more questions that pop up as we go on on this mission. Right. Are they hired? Are they, is Waylon Yutani aware that this is happening? Are these people with the restricted access, the smugglers, hired by our company? Like, uh, 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 huh? Wouldn't be surprised. I mean, obviously, you need a special key card to get into this room. It's not like they're hiding things in plain sight or hiding things in common areas, disguising them. They're in plain sight right here in this room. My friends were worth more than just guns and drugs. Your lives are worth more, more than just guns and drugs. This is the reason why we need to get out of here. And here we are, trying to survive with guns and drugs. So, I agree. It's definitely a dirty jo dirtier job than I expected, but nothing surprises me with Waylon Yutani anymore. Well, except yeah. except except the thing we saw and that nest of them. That's going to haunt me for the rest of my life, but all right. I don't think it's registered yet. Well, I'll be here for you when it does. My so friends. I like to check some crates. I'm looking for a big, big boomstick. <laughs> Same. Two words, flamethrower. <laughs> so. I would gladly take a flamethrower <laughs> if we can find one. <laughs> so looking, looking now, perusing through these crates um, a little bit further, everything on the right-hand side is drugs. Of all the illegal, illegal types, um, the crates that you've been perusing through um, are a mixture of weapons and ammo and then there is some armour it appears that these smugglers have been literally moving drugs and weapons um, in and out of this, this facility um, and that's mainly all you find is drugs and weapons in regards to weapons apart from the um, service pistols there is a um magnus revolver just saying so there's a, like a, a heavy revolver there um it's mainly pulse rifles and there are two more smart guns like what luke has but you don't see any flamethrowers Can I assess the explosives to see if they may or may not be okay to carry? Yeah, um, you kind of crack open the, the crate and look inside and basically what you see is the um, equivalent to like C4. So it's like plastic explosives with um, detonation triggers and the little bits you'd prod into the plastic explosive that would then wirelessly connect to the detonator. And there's like two crates of it blocking the door that Lydia's just put there. I will take some of these and put what I can into my one of the pouches on my tool belt. Yeah. No Hopefully problem. safely. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see. But yeah, so that's there. So you guys arm yourselves up with any new weapons or anything you've got. Like on your character sheet. Make sure you're all ready and prepped. Is it, is it possible to stuff as many grenade or uh, explosives into like a bag or something I can carry? You can. There is. There's, there's probably a couple duffel bags in the room. You can, you can take as other as items out and put explosives into. I'll dump that as many and just take one bag for me at least filled with explosives. Yeah. No problem. So. You're all kitted out, more so than you were when you entered this place. 
um, which is a nice change of pace considering what's been going on. Um, where are you going now? What, what are we doing now? Well, if we go back, we can check on the reboot, but personally, I don't know if... I think we should keep pressing forward. The doors are locked. The last door is an airlock. It would take hours to open it up with a blowtorch. If we continue forward? If we continue forward without Mother's access. And that leaves us with one option. We've got to go back to the command room and see if that reboot has finally finished. Because we're pretty stuck without it. I can try to access it from... I can try to access her manually here. It's worth a shot. And I'll see if I can get the status of the reboot from this location. Yeah. So you jack back into the uh, comp panel on the wall there um, and see where Mother is up to with her reboot. Um, looking around, it appears that um, full oxygen control is up and running. So you have that access now. Um, some of the um, locking mechanisms on the doors are up and running. Um, so a lot of the internal doors um, you you now have access to. So you can actually bypass certain areas that would require a key card. You can just unlock those when by patching in. Um, all of the base lighting is up and running. So you have you now have access to all internal lighting. Um, but the main lockdown is still still in effect so all exits are still locked until further notice um, some of the CCTV is up and running uh, and the comms room is up and running now the comms room is on the ground level where you went in it's actually off the atrium um, and it's separate to the command deck the command deck is where the, the, the general running of the station is the comms room is like for their long distance communications that's a separate room because it has its own like antenna system on that side of the station um, but that room is fully operational and as these are coming on I'm, I'm basically using mother's voice to mimic this back to Vic and the team alright well we've made some progress I think we can go forward from here and I'll see if I can open the doors, or are we, sorry, um, are we, where are we moving from here? So to give you a, a if you want a reminder of the layout of this level, because you're on the third level, um, if you come out the door, so basically you've got this restricted room on this side, um, the door where the body was found outside, that just looped around to the door you guys broke through. Um, heading that way, you've got a left turn back into the comm room, Heading through that is just a corridor to the to a, a, an elevator that isn't working, but you, you guys came up the service shaft. Uh, passing that, you have two med bays, another elevator, and um, following it further on is where the, the fuel storage is for the, um, the refueling section of the, the hangar. That's what's on this level. But the lifts aren't working, but you obviously have the service hatches. Spider's body has the hard drive. And that's all we need to complete our mission. That's correct. But it doesn't sound like uh, those things want us to get it. How are we doing on oxygen percentages? Oxygen at 100% and I'm able to change the oxygen saturations of the room. Okay. Well, we've got fire, so... We can go do this if we if we really are feeling... feeling up for a little risk tonight. I am, always. That's the spirit. No risk, no reward. Well, now we do have remote detonators, so that's a bonus. That is a bonus. And drugs! And drugs. All the good stuff. Well, shall we? 
we, we're, we're just jumping into this? That's what, well, okay, yep. I mean, keep going forward. I don't see any point. Each time we go backwards, we've got to recheck to make sure it's safe. I say more ground covered forwards is more ground to that hard drive. Yep, okay. Just uh, keep your eyes about you for what's below your feet, if you can. Looks like these things can come from any direction, which is not ideal. Like, what are your thoughts on these uh, flashlights? Because I'll attach one to my shoulder just so we have light all the time, but I don't know if we want to potentially make ourselves known like that. I think stealth is going to be our friend here. Okay. Um, but it would be good to potentially grab them just in case. Blow some shit up, I guess. Okay, let's move it. Yeah. So which way are we going? We're gonna pass the corpse very carefully. Squad, while when we walk past this body here, be light with your footsteps. Because I don't know I don't know what's gonna be under us. Okay, so you guys make your way out of this restricted smuggler's den um, and start working your way back around the corridor. Um, you pass the corpse with the hole in the floor and you come past the bend that brings you back to the door you entered the um, restricted room in and you pass that and you get, to the, you get to the junction where you've got the command deck to your left and then it continues on round. Are we continuing on? Let's continue on. Okay. So you pass the command deck and you move around the corridor which has um, another bend. When you get to that bend, looking around you see that on the, the right there are two doors um, for med bays. And then you can see that there is a, a sign that shows where the lift is on the left opposite those. And then it continues round and there is a sign that says fuel fuel storage that way. Do we want to just check the med bay since we haven't been there yet? Yes, but I will urge caution as the last person we found in a medical situation in a med medical room. Uh, seem to have something that ripped out of their chest, so. We're in the best shape. Yeah. I don't want to be, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want any of you to be that guy. So, yeah, we'll be careful, I guess. Norman, can you access these doors? I can. And since Mother's on mine, I'm gonna see if I can, um manual jack in so it's not making any sound over overhead mother open doors and I give the command to open the door mm-hmm. and as you're doing this what kind of order are we all positioned in around this doorway I'm aiming my gun towards the, the new side of the corridor that we haven't yet explored. Um, and periodically looking down, just trying to be aloof. <laughs> okay. I don't like that roll. <laughs> I'm just rolling like dice. That. That's like fine, it. that's fine, don't worry about it. Stop um, it. <laughs> just testing it out. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? So, Norman jacks into the, the 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 terminal on the next to the door, and asks, you know, accesses his mother and gets gets the the door opened. In doing so, you see that the the panel flashes um, green, and then the door kind of you hear it 
and the door slowly starts to open. There is no light inside the room. But the door... I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights if I can as well. Yeah. So, you do that and then the lights kind of flicker for a second and then they, they pop on. Um, and you see something at the back of the room. What does it something look like? You just see something big at the back of the room for a split second. Now I need everyone to make me an observation roll. Two successes. Two successes. Got one. One success. One success. Okay. So as the, the door opens, Norman turns the lights on and it flickers and then it's on. And you all see, you all kind of look in the room and see something at the back. And it's, it's that split second reaction where you're like, whoa, what the fuck? And you all turn to see what's there. And you all see uh, what appears to be a person hanging from the back of the room. Can we That's not supposed to happen in a medical bay. Hanging by what? A rope. Oh. Lydia, is that a standard medical procedure? No. It, it is when you're shit out of luck. This to me looks like someone realized that either they were going to do it themselves or something else was going to do it. As you say that, Lydia, you all hear a crash. Oh, fucking hell. And a metal grate falls to the floor from the ceiling above in the corridor. As you all spin round, you see a elongated black arm grabbing the back of Luke's body armor and pulling him to the ceiling. I'm shooting it. I'm shooting yep, the arm. I'm shooting it. Okay. Shit. And that's, absolutely. That's where we're going to take a break. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, why are why? you like this? <laughs> what? what? We, 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 have to, ah. we have to have a break at some point, guys. So, I'm going to go cry now and on break. So. so, for those watching, thank you very much for watching so far. Um, oh. We are going to take a, a short five, ten minute break. Um, and then we'll jump back into the game and see where Luke's off to. Um, <laughs> but before we go, we do have our uh, Mithril Armory giveaway. So, it is for, in fact, I won't show you that. I will play you the little video. So, we have... The tin twenties uh, from Mithril Armory, um, and we are going to be giving away a set of these um, to one lucky winner. So all you need to do, get back to us. There we are. Um, is type in chat just the one word uh, marine. That's all you need to type in chat. Just type it once in chat, and you'll be entered. And then when we come back from break, we will pick a winner and then we'll get them sent out to you. So, again, all it is is just type the word Marine in chat, job done, and that's it. So yeah, we will now jump to a break and just let everyone breathe for a second and then we'll, we'll come back. So yeah, we will um, see you all very shortly.
And we are back. Um, thank you everyone for sticking around while we had um, a short break and everyone had a, a moment. Um, so before we jump in, we will uh, get our winner of the 1020 set, which is Ravenswood 134. Congratulations, you have won a set of uh, 1020s from Mithril Armory. Um, I know for a fact you're in our Discord, so I'll drop you a message and get your details um, after the game and we'll get those sent out to you um, ASAP. Um, so congratulations, and again, everyone watching, do check out Mithril Armour's Kickstarter for the Tin Hedrals. Um, they're really cool, and it is tio.mithralarmory.com. Takes you straight there from us. Um, let's you know, lets them know we've sent you. Um, so, bringing things back to where we left off. What was happening now? What I, what, what happened? I'm shooting uh, an arm! I'm shooting an arm! Well, Absolutely. We, we went home and everything was fine. Oh, yeah. I'm on so. the ground. <laughs> Luke is not being attacked by a xenomorph. Yes. Um, so you guys had made your way round to the med bay, opened the door, um, turned the lights on, and proceeded to see that a person in there had um, chosen to take their own life rather than have it taken from them um, and then upon seeing that a grate from the ceiling of the corridor smashed down and a elongated black arm um, gripped the back of Luke's armour and began dragging him up and I believe Lydia turned around and attempted to um, fire at said so, I would like yeah, to. Yes, she did. Can I also <laughs> run forward and try to grab his legs? You can, yeah, if you want to. Yes. So, we're not going to roll any form of initiative for this because this is just a spontaneous action. So we're going to homebrew this slightly. Um, in regards to rounds, combat rounds, and everything like that. Um, you get a slow action and a fast action, or two fast actions um, that you can perform. Um, but as this, I'm not quite classing this combat just yet, so we're going to just do this on the whim. So Lydia said she was going to shoot, and Magdalena is going to grab him. So Lydia, if you want to um, shoot your gun, make a ranged combat. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, boy. That's a success. Success. Okie dokie. And how much damage does that do? How do I know how much damage? Uh, what gun was it? My pulse rifle. Uh, the pulse rifle. Let me get to that quickly. Do do pulse rifle. It should be listed on your character sheet. I just have that I have a pulse rifle. It should say damage. Did you not put it into the weapon? There's section? a spot, but I didn't enter anything. No. Ah, I see. I broke it. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. We'll go two seconds just to get to the page. It's your first time using weapons, so. I'm sure everyone, no one minds, but it'll take a minute to work that out. Here we go. So, your pulse rifle does two damage. It's on my sheet now. <laughs> you did. This guy. Okay. So, you get your gun and you, you fire. Uh, this arm. Luckily, you succeeded and missed Luke um, and managed to get the arm just before it becomes out of sight from you. Uh, Magdalena, you you grab at um, Luke's legs. Make me just a straight strength roll. Sorry, it took me a second to find it. 
Uh, that would be two successes and one failure. Two successes, one failure. Yep. No problem. Okay. Um, so, in the culmination of Lydia shooting at the arm and Magdalena kind of grabbing his legs and yanking him down, um, you do manage to just about dislodge Luke from its grasp. Um, and Luke, you kind of fall face first to the ground with a clatter um, and the arm retracts and you, you hear kind of like a, a high pitch squeal and then you hear a lot of shuffling in the ceiling and it, it kind of moves away to the point where it's it's gone now and your focus is on Luke. Um, Luke, as you hit the ground, um, you know, you feel the heavy blow of that and the, the shock kind of kicks in as to what's just, just happened. But at the same time, your shoulder is really hurting you right now. Like, you are in excruciating pain. My, my shoulder here. It, it, help me get up my gun. I gotta shoot that thing. Get Where him into I the went? med bay. Quick. No, we can't let it get away. It's gonna come back. It's gonna grab us again. Yeah, okay, but... I don't know what you think you're trying to do with just one arm right now, so at least let me look at it. We should do it in, in somewhere where it's a bit safer. If we can get in the med bay and shut the door, then we'll at least have some cover. I already got your legs. Thanks. We, we, we better hurry then. All right, slide him into here. Let's let's shuffle over here. Norman, get the door behind us. We're gonna kill the horse. Yep. So you, it, yeah, you guys move into the med bay. Norman shuts the doors behind you. Is there a medical on the while I'm connected to the system? Can I bring up any like um, like a medical guide at all I can read to help uh, with this treatment? There's nothing you can see, uh, reading wise. Um, there's nothing you can bring up in regards to like any medical journals on on how to do any medical stuff. Um, looking around the room, though, it does appear to be a very kind of simplistic for this era um, med bay. It's just a standard kind of dolly kind of bed, um, and there's cabinets with like medical supplies at the back and and stuff. Um, there's no like, you know, auto med bay thing that does all the, all the singing, all dancing, self healing. Anything I'm stuff. looking for a very something very specific. Is there like a physician's desk reference I can look for? It's a really thick book. It's probably about this big. There is. You see it on a shelf on the back left corner, just next to where the body is hanging gonna go ahead and grab that book and then just stand next to Lydia in case she needs me to look up anything. Yeah. I thought you were gonna teach me how to do my job and I was gonna be real pissed. <laughs> just gonna hold it. Uh, I'm going to feel his shoulders, see if maybe it's dislocated or if it's popped out of the joint, if it's something that I could easily just pop back in or or something or... Okay. So as you go to examine him, obviously Luke is wearing his combat armor and it does have like a shoulder plate um it appears to there appears to be a hole in that that has melted through is his skin damaged yes it appears to have um a severe burn on his shoulder okay i'm gonna look for any type of antiseptic anti like a some kind of ointment to put on it that's a disgusting word i'm so sorry to anyone that hates the word ointment <laughs> um, but yeah, anything that I could put on top of it to potentially, you know, cover it up. So, and infect it make and me a stuff. medical aid roll. That is four successes. Four successes, lovely. So, you quickly kind of shuffle around the room um, looking for supplies you find um, a couple of bottles of just like a saline solution to wash out the the burnt area um, and you find um, what appears to be 
um, some form of salve um, that you can kind of and wipe on, and it is like a it's like a barrier cream, as it were, um, that should be able to stop um, air getting to it and, and everything, and kind of keep it contained and covered and moist. Another wonderful word there. <laughs> But yeah, but it's 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 basically there's a like an antiseptic protective cream basically there that you can put on. Okay. Um, but as you kind of turn back like and rapid. yeah, as you're kind of dressing that, anyone looking at Luke's armor, the shoulder piece where it had melted through, the, the hole is still kind of getting bigger on the armor, on the the shoulder piece of his armor. Get, get the armor off. Get get, get that off of him. Uh, careful, it hurts. And yeah, think, whatever uh, whatever grabbed you, something's eating away at your armor, and it burnt you. And my arm. That's why we want the armor off. All right, I'm going to try to remove it. Yeah, you, you're able to take that kind of the shoulder, like the pauldron part of his, his um, combat armor off. Um, the rest of it's fine. It's just where it's kind of hit that point and just spread on that shoulder piece. hell is that? Acid? Or something? Can I look at the metal? Or can I look at the, the, the shoulder pad? If I can, I hold it up. Yeah, exactly. you can have a look at it. And it's... it. You, you're not sure what the substance is um, that's caused it, but it seems to be corroding the metal away. With relative ease. Can I take my finger? Let's see. Just to touch it? Yeah. And see if it burns it. Yeah, you, you kind of prod the, the edge of the metal and yeah, you, you, you get you see that kind of sizzle and slight melting of your fingertip. Gets acidic. What are these things made out of? I don't know, but the scary thing is it just touched him. It didn't even bite him. Whatever they are, the second it grabs you, it starts doing damage. And the thing just came out of nowhere. Uh, To be fair, you have been looking up this whole time. Yep. What were you going to say, Luke? Well, I was going to ask the game mother, are there like vents in this room? Is there anywhere where that could possibly happen here? Um, looking at the ceiling in here, there are vents. Um, in this room, there are only like small air vents in here. Um, nothing the sort of size as, as on the, the corridors, which is more like... On the corridors, it seems like it's more larger utility venting and, and grating. Um, in the room, it's just kind of more just like smaller airflow vents in here. The ceiling's mainly lighting. Being a med bay, it's got to be a well-lit room. What the hell do we do from here? We gotta get that hard drive as fast as possible and get off of this godforsaken space rubble. The longer we stay on here, the longer we're gonna be hunted. Yeah. Or literally prey. The longer we are on in this station. Baron, you okay to travel? Continue traveling forward? Yeah. I want to kill that thing. Yeah. Well, at least you still have a head. Unlike the other guy. Uh, anything useful in this room we can maybe use? Or we just keep going? Beyond medical supplies and the corpse, you don't see anything of, of value. ID card on the corpse? There is, but it's um, a blue one, like what you've previously got. Uh, is there any medical supplies other than what I already have? Um, not really, no. Nothing okay. Nothing major beyond what you have, Just, just more of.
So what next? Are there any other doors in this room that could lead forward, or we have to go back the shitty way? Just the one door. Alright. I guess we go back the shitty way. Uh, I know normally only a few of us are being main eyes, but we've all got to be looking up, down, corridors. They're more likely to sneak up on us. Just, again, like they're stalking prey. And knew exactly where we were. You know what? Screw it. We'll use light. Not using light didn't help us at all before. It only hindered us. These things hunt in the dark. I'll click on the little flashlight I put on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Got the high beam on. Mm hmm. <laughs> Just like in Phasmophobia, you grab your strong flashlights and pop them up there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do I still have any shoulder room for a flashlight? Do I have to switch it to the other side? You've got, yeah, you're, you, you've are you got one on your, the, the other side, yeah. Uh, just right. obviously that, that pauldron part there is, is non-existent. Um, you've not taken any um, damage from that to your, your health. It's just a case of you burn your arm, it's sore, it's a slight distraction, if anything. So, you guys heading out of this room and moving round the the corridor to the to the right, We're continuing that way. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Norman unlocks the door, and you now head out, being um, more cautious and steady with your movements. Um, as you turn to continue. You see that there is another door on the right, which is to another med bay, um, and then there is the um, elevator on the left, um, which does not appear to be active still. Um, you do know there is a service hatch to the elevators, as you did crawl, climb up one service hatch to the other elevator. That was a case of that elevator was specifically ground level to command deck. That's the only that was the only route that that elevator took. This elevator um, services all decks. Um, but again, it doesn't appear to be operational at this moment. But there's a service hatch you can access. Or continuing round, the, the corridor takes you to where the, the, the fuel storage is. So where would you like to go? Norman, what's the best direction to get us to that nest or spider I guess we probably got to go back down given the current situation and seeing that we noticed they were in the ventilation shafts our options are weathering thin it seems like it may be the only way in is through the front door but that would be a suicide mission It also seems that going through the vents would be the same situation as well. Those things apparently move fast in vents, and we're not as fast. What are the odds we can lure them to a different spot? But no noise? Um, were we being particularly noisy earlier when that thing came down? I mean, I thought we were being pretty stealthy. Maybe I can find something. And I'm going to connect uh, manually into the system again and see if I can bring up the schematics for the room and the things I'm going to look for to see if I can overlay it are ventilation shafts, electrical shafts, anything that can plug wire, gas that can turn off, things that I can potentially crawl in um, and bring that up in multiple levels and display. Okay. So re-engaging with Mother and getting the, the, the station schematics up. Um, as time has passed, certain um, facilities have re-engaged, um, and you now have access to the full map of the station. Um, so, obviously you're on level 3, you entered on level 1, there's level 2 which you have not had any involvement with or engagement with. Um, on level 2, um, you have 
the there is the, the hangar bay. So the hangar where the ships came in takes up level one and two, which is only accessible through level one. It's just size wise, it takes up a portion of that level. Um, the atrium takes up level one and two, and there's a, a an upper balcony in the atrium um, where you can access it from level two. On level two is the living quarters, and there is now that you have this access. Um, there is a balcony level within the storage bay, similar to the atrium where you have like a, a balcony around the edge, a walkway. There is that in the storage bay, and there is access to the storage bay from level two. There is also an additional storage area on level two that joins on with the main storage bay. I'm going to highlight that with Nick, just to turn around show that as an option. I mean, that can get us where we need to be, but how safe is it going to be compared to another route? Judging by what we were spoken, spoken about earlier, if we can get an explosion in that room, maybe we can start the fire that direction move it out we have remote detonators so we still have to place them and also we have to worry about damaging spider while she's in there judging by these creatures i would soon to say that spider is no longer living but the data is worth it do we have to worry about the the data potentially being damaged by this I mean, he never said it needed to be a working hard drive. That is true. If we're being honest here. Also, screw him. He sent us two into a death trap. <clears throat> and you should be prepared for that, Lydia. And I'm going to give her the physician's desk reference. Just, it has everything between sutures and how to treat syphilis, but I'm sure that's not going to be useful today. So here, and I hand you the... Thank you, I think. In case you need it. In case I'm treating someone syphilis? No. If it has everything between using sutures as well as that, you can find any medical diagnosis in there. You should be able to treat whatever you need. Well, let's hope we make it home for me to treat someone syphilis then. turn okay so where are we going let's go to the second floor Anybody? so your only way uh, so your only way of accessing the second floor well you have two, two options you either uh, open a fresh service panel to get into the service hatch of the lift here or you go back round through the command deck to the other lift down to the ground floor and then make your way from the ground floor somehow i say we try getting there to there from here and the more we backtrack and the more we go through the area that whatever that thing is infesting the more we're gonna put ourselves at risk so i say i say we just direct line it to floor two Yep, at this point, short and sweet route there. That's it. Okay. So to do that, you're going to have to take the um, hatch panel off next to the lift to gain access to the um, service ladder. I'll take it off. Okay. Uh, you don't need to roll anything, just being the kind of roughneck. Uh, mechanic of the group, you're able to just quickly do that. Um, I will remind you back to when you first arrived at the station, you went to the atrium. This is the same shaft that had all the blood splatter at the bottom when you was in the atrium. Um, that was open at ground level. Um, and you guys end up going up the other one, which got you to the command deck. This one was the one that was open at the atrium level with blood in. Um, but you're at the third level, so it's fine. So you open the hatch, 
and you now have access to the the ladder that will take you down to level 2 and back down to the atrium if needed. Hey y'all, just a reminder, and I relay that about the blood spatter <laughs> that was at the bottom of the atrium. Oh. I guess don't slip. And I look at Norman. Don't slip. I got to. All right, we know how this goes. Gun, guns aimed up, guns aimed down. Literally aim the gun anywhere you can, uh, if you can. Have a, Watch have for a a trouble. Falling. Do you want to trade with me? Do you want my? Oh, well, pulse rifle's kind of two-handed too. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll power through. As I said, I'm gonna kill it. Everybody watch for falling body parts. You got anything in that backpack you can uh, maybe give him for the pain? It's, what do you want? <laughs> uh, also, too. Well, okay, so here's, here's the thing. I'm gonna dig through my bag, pull out a little syringe, like flick it, and start digging through like my little bottles. So I've got Naprovel. Don't think he needs that right now. He's not in shock. He's just in pain, and the pain is not that bad. Well, what? You know, I, to, to what I can see, it's it's a burn. Nothing's falling off. Um, That's true, so Lydia. If you want, I do have what we found in the other room. It'll just make you feel real good. I'll power through, it's okay. If you change your mind, I have plenty. Okay, okay. For now, I'm, I'm fine. Hey, Luke, you think you can manage a pistol or a revolver? If you have one to spare. I mean, I've got my eyes on that revolver, but... I'm willing to share, if you'd like. That'll do for now. Thanks. Okay. And what's the damage on that? It's, <laughs> it is, uh, one second. It is, uh, it's a plus one bonus. And damage is two. Cool. Got it. Okay. So you all head into the service shaft. Let's start descending the ladder down to level two. What's the marching order? Who's first? Who's last? Who's in the middle? Let's have Lydia, do you want to stick with Luke in the maybe the middle? Just yeah. since I don't want you two being last or Luke for that matter, because well, look what happened last time, and I don't want him to be target for prey as a prey. Um, I guess I'll go in front, and then Magdalena, you want to cover the rear? You got it. All right. Let's do this. Okay, so I don't like when you roll. <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> so you descend the ladder, moving from level three down to level two, in the hopes that this level will give you access to this storage bay, um, where you're going to find this data. Um, you make your way down the ladder uninterrupted, Luke. You manage. It's it hurts, but you power through, um, and you've got like your your smart gun kind of over your back now, um, as it's going to be a bit hard, and you you're going to use the pistol instead. Um, so you make your way down and get to level two with the hatch covering. Um, 
is Magdalena just going to, again, remove that hatch and, and get the access into level two? Yes. Okay. Just got to ask the question. Um, so you go to remove the hatch for level two and literally, like, you put your tool to it to start unscrewing and it just kind of flops off. I'm just that good. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> for some reason, it was very loose. I wonder if that uh, has to do with the giant blood splatter at the bottom. Maybe proceed with caution. I don't know. All right. I will first. I have my shoulder flashlight on because that was a smart move. Um, and I'm going to kind of look up with my gun and then look down to see if I see anything before I fully go into the uh, service shaft. You're already in the service shaft. Great. You guys are, you've, you've already descended. You're now exiting. Oh, oops. <laughs> I'm clearly really careful here. <laughs> um, Okay, so I shine, I shine my light out, and I just, I'm just kind of looking around the room just to make sure that there's, there's nothing with inside before entering the room. Yeah. Okay. So it's a good job you put your flashlight on because this second level, um, looking out into the corridor, there is no light. It is, it is pitch black out there. Um, for some reason, the the station lights on this level are not working. Um, or appear to not be working as you look out and you kind of quickly survey the area um, looking at the walls they are very similar to the the first corridor you entered the station um, they are not the standard rectangle steel walls they are this more organic matted covered wall um, that appears to be like some sort of oh, organic matter that's been put on the wall mm. and turned into a hard coating and reshaped it into more of a, a, a tunnel shape with um, a somewhat kind of spinal column sort of rigid framework um, and that's what appears to be on the, the walls as you look out of this elevator service shaft great great well, we're getting closer to wherever these things are coming from, so... Uh, but there's more of that... almost exoskeleton-like substance covering covering this, this area, so... Uh, just be careful. And, we're, and it's dark also, too, so we're gonna need eyes in all directions. Otherwise, I'm worried that we're gonna get snuck up on... again. I have a rifle in hand, and I'm gonna walk behind to make sure. This, I'm actually gonna pay attention to more of the bends at the top while we're going here. Okay. Um, as you all exit this um, service shaft, and and now stood within this this tunnel corridor area um, of level two, can you all make observation rolls? I just rolled a one on my panic dice, my stress dice. Uh, and I got no successes. So. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, no. <laughs> Had to happen. Had to happen at some point. Three. Three successes. Someone go get the cat. Stress cat. Stress cat. So, Vic, we'll come to you in a second. Um, anyone else fail, or has everyone else rolled successes? Three successes and one failure. Two successes, no failure. Okie dokie. So as you all stand in the darkness of this area of the ship, and take a moment just to kind of do your checks, um, 
you hear you hear movement and you hear sound not close by but not overly far away you hear uh, the sound of scratching you hear kind of a low kind of guttural um, screech sound and you do hear um, multiple sources of movement you all kind of pull into yourselves and you know kind of ready your weapons Vic kind of hits you a little bit too hard you know you're trying to keep this squad together trying to keep yourself together you know you've seen some shit in the past and you're seeing something worse now so can you make me a panic roll and that is a a d6 and then add how many stress dice you've got Two and two. Two and two. Okay, okay. Um, so you're kind of like there. You're you know. You're kind of in in a mon- in a monologue in yourself, going, you know, I need to keep this together. I need to keep everyone together. You know, we've lost enough people in the past. Can't keep losing people. You know, we said we'd make this work, and you kind of take a second, take a deep breath, and you keep it together, just. So, what's everyone doing now? The fuck was that sound? Probably whatever grabbed Luke, but more on that. I don't know how we're gonna get out of this alive. I don't know. I don't know. I like the explosives plan. I uh, yeah. Yeah. The sooner we get off this ship, the sooner. I Magdalena, I will have a drink with you, a full bottle of of whatever you want. Excellent. It'll be waiting. Got Me too. This. You got this. Got it. All right. Where do we need to go to place the, the explosives so we can detonate this? Seems to be through the schematics we would go to the balcony area to get to the lower or to get to the to get to the room. Do you know? Do we just have to keep going forward through this this corridor? Unfortunately, we do. kind of just slap myself around just to kind of slap my cheeks just to kind of get reoriented all right hey hey do you want to come here for a second are you going to offer me drugs i am definitely going to offer you drugs okay i'm fine right now i'm fine okay if that happens again, I don't know. Maybe I'll say yes, but... Uh, I was kind of just going to stab you, but I figured I'd ask permission first. Yes, thank you. Yeah, let's uh, let's continue on. And... Just know that... If anything happens, it's been an honor serving with you all. You don't have to say that, because we're all going to go home and be fine, and everything is going to be great. Just like every other time. I know that we've lost people in the past, but we came out alive for some reason. Yeah. I like your attitude. Alright. Hey, Luke, you mind if I... You feel, you feel, you feel good ch- being able to... You, you feel like you can hit one of those things with that, that revolver? Yeah. Okay, good. Just making sure. No doubt. All right, let's go. And I lead the way, uh, kind of crouching. Um, with my flashlight on. Okay. So you all start to move forward. 
um, making your way, um, hopefully, to the entrance to the balcony area that overlooks this storage bay where you've previously seen these creatures on the CCTV and the egg-shaped items on the floor and where you believe Spider is who has the data drive with the um, information you acquire to complete your mission. Um, it's not a narrow corridor, this is quite a wide one as this second level is more of like a, a main living um, level because there are living quarters on this level um, as well as access to the atrium and to the storage area. So you make your way down this what is now more of a, a large tunnel rather than a, a, a wide set corridor because of this kind of excretion that is on all the walls making it more organic like. Um, you press on at a slow steady pace with your flashlights on because there is no other light on this level as this, this covering has covered all the lights basically and that's why there's no light getting through. Um, you take your time following Norman's direction on where the schematic state that the entrance is that will bring you onto this balcony. Um, you move along and after you know a couple minutes because it's, it's you're taking a very slow pace because you really are watching um, around you. You still hear these noises, you still hear these scratching sounds, you still hear these kind of low guttural screeches. They are coming from ahead of you, where you are walking towards, um, giving you the impression that these are from inside the storage bay. Um, and these are the, the things you saw on the camera. Now whilst you're moving forward, you get to a point where you see a bit of an intersection. Um, in the in the, the tunnel there is a left and you're at a fork basically there is a left and there is a right um norman remembering the schematics left you think would take you to the storage bay right would lead off to living quarters to crew and and guests on the station living quarters would be that way um you kind of all stop at this point just taking a moment to check you know check everyone's okay everything's safe to, to proceed um, can you make me observation rolls so Vic's got one success Norman got one success Magdalena three successes Lydia one success Luke no success one failure one failure, just on a normal die. On a normal die. No worries. One second. Um, you all take that moment and kind of just scan around. You, you kind of look into the, the, the left tunnel forward, look into the right tunnel that you think leads to living quarters, and kind of scan behind and you know looking back at the path you've you've taken um but first glance you don't see anything it's just beyond the the extent of the the torchlight it is dark um and luke you definitely don't see anything um but magdalena as you're kind of turning back from looking behind um turning turning to vic to be like you know we're good, let's press on. You you kind of turn and you, you catch a little glint of something just on the edge of your, your torch's light and you kind of stop, look at Vic and then turn back. And it's only, it's only about that big in size. Um, but you see, you see silver. Um, and it's kind of, you see like, little long striations of silver about that big uh, about that size um, and you kind of squint to try and focus your eyes and then you see the, the, the kind of striations part 
And then your eyes focus and you see a mouth around the small oh, silver no. bit. <laughs> and this no. is like on the edge of your torchlight. So you're talking 15, 20 foot back. And then okay. Lydia, you hear something coming down the corridor to the left from where you're intended on going. You hear movement coming from that way. And Magdalena, this this kind of silver silver mouth that opens, you, you can see that it is like salivating intensely. And then it it moves forward into just into the reach of your light, and then you see this slick black elongated head. And then it moves back out of the range of your light and the silver mouth disappears. You don't see anything. But Lydia, you can hear movement now coming and this low guttural kind of uh, coming from the the tunnel that leads towards the, the storage bay. I am pointing my rifle right at it wherever I hear the noise coming from. We have company and I had a visual. There was tea and it was nasty. And there are noises, and I hate it. Weapons ready at any second. It is within about 20 feet, more or less, that I lost sight. All right. Eyes all about. Luke, keep your eyes ahead. I'll cover Magdalena at the rear. I also okay. am using my flashlight on my shoulder to hopefully add light to Magdalena but make me my... make me a survival roll is that question is that wits plus survival yes oh, dope. I mean roger that Lydia, make me another observation. I am uh, unsuccessful. Unsuccessful. Okay. I got no successes, but no failures. Okay. We're gonna die. <laughs> okay. So... Vic, as you kind of assist Magdalena and you both point your torches behind and try and kind of merge the beam to try and intensify the light, um, you do so, weapons drawn, and slowly start to continue the press on. Um, Lydia, you're focusing on the, the tunnel ahead where you're intended to go, which is also where you saw, should I say, heard the sound of movement coming from that direction. As you all now as a group start to move towards that tunnel at this this uh, kind of fork in the road. Uh, Magdalena and Vic, you see a movement of black across the, the edge of your torchlight. Move from the right to the left as that moves right to left, you see a movement of black move left to right at the same time. Lydia, you then hear, in fact, all of you then hear two high-pitched squeals. These are not human squeals, come from the tunnel ahead where the storage bay is. As these kind of high-pitched squeals call out you then hear two more from behind you I want to use all of my experience from all of these years that we've been working together and I want to pinpoint at least one of those screeches and shoot the hell at it uh, make me a ranged combat uh -oh. I need a minimum of two successes for this 
Well, I got two failures. So you kind you with your gun you just kind of burst fire into the darkness where you hear this screech. Um and you don't hear the sound of any impact. But because you're using your pulse rifle, the muzzle flash is quite oh, bright on no. this, and you manage to illuminate that tunnel a bit more, and you see two of these creatures you saw on camera um, on all fours, one walking across the floor towards you, one gripped onto the ceiling, walking towards you from this. So they're both kind of coming at you from this tunnel. No. Nope. Now, Vic and Magdalena, who are covering the rear, you also have the sound of two creatures behind you, and you have just seen the movement of two of them just on the edge of your torchlight, about 20 feet away. I'm going to I'm gonna fire at where I think it is. Okay, um, make me... Especially after hearing Lydia fire. Yeah, make me a ranged combat. I would also like to take out my 357 Magnum and attempt to shoot. Yeah. Luke and Norman, you're kind of in the middle of these these three, so if you guys want to... Is there an access point where I can access Mother? Um, not that you can visibly see, but there is I obviously the other tunnel that leads towards the living quarters. Um, I'm going to stay with our group here. I'll walk with our group. What I'm going to do is also get to the side uh, with my rifle and uh, just ready with Lydia. Whatever direction she fires, I'll fire with her. Okay. And I'm doing the, and I'm pointing the uh, pistol, um, sort of the same direction that uh, Magdalena is, and also firing off. Okay, so anyone shooting, make me arrange combat, and then let me know what you get. I did not succeed, okay. but I am going to uh, shout out. Grenade would be real helpful right about now. I'm gonna straight. I'm not even gonna look at her. I'm just gonna pull it out, and I'm gonna just try to hand it to her behind me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, did not succeed here. <laughs> successes, okay. I was so sure of myself, but nope, no successes, but three failures. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Norman, nope. are you shooting? Yeah, I'm shooting as well. I had to roll 2d6, and I got nothing, so no success. Okay. I rolled 9d6, <laughs> and got nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you all fire into the darkness. Delta Squadron, woo! Being Being skilled elite force operatives with years of, of combat experience and training. And Norman. Um, <laughs> you're all fire blindly. Maybe five minutes. And hitting nothing. But, as I said, there's a lot of muzzle flash from these weapons, which illuminates the area. Um, giving you better vision on what's around you. Um, so obviously with Luke firing the same way as Lydia, Luke, you also see these two creatures, one on the floor, one on the ceiling, making their way steadily towards you. Um, they are ducking slightly as you are firing towards them, but you can see mouths open, spittle everywhere. Um, teeth bared Vic and Magdalena obviously you fire blindly behind at these two shadows as they were that moved um, as you miss everything you do illuminate behind you further than your torches and you do see three of these creatures stalking behind you uh, yeah now, I'm gonna It's what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna give you an option here we can roll initiative and go into combat. Or you can all make me mobility checks because there is the other corridor that has no signs of anything coming from it. I'm down to not die. It would also be in favor of potentially not dying if I can help it. 
Because with the muzzle flashes from Lydia and Luke facing that direction, because his corridor split there, you can you you've been able to see down that corridor that there is there is nothing that you can visibly see down there as it bends around the corner. So I'm letting you know that there is the option to do that. There is the option to attempt to get back to the service hatch, which would both be mobility checks, or we roll initiative. If we fail, do we die? <laughs> <laughs> I like it's just an or, not. There's, there's so or you have the time. option. I will give you the option. I will say, at this okay. point, you have all taken another point of stress, oh, as God. you are currently being stalked by five of these creatures. Um, I think. I think we should. There's a corridor right there. We should jump into it. <laughs> We're but yeah, there, there is always the other option. I, I've seen oh. these things rip my friends apart. Oh, I just yell, run. I would love to run, run it and see a grenade get shocked behind us. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll fucking do it right now. <laughs> Obviously, we're all marksmen. So what? 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 What are you doing? Running down the hallway. Yeah, we are running. Running. If someone yeah. says run, yeah, I'm going. I'm going, with. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go last. One success from Lydia. One success from Vic. Oh, one success. One success from Magdalena. One, one success. success from Luke. Norman. No. No. Okay. No. Okay. One second. Okay, you all start to book it down this corridor. Which is, from all intents and purposes, where the living quarters are. Um, you run. You hear the sound of these creatures behind you. You hear the screech that they, they let out. And you hear the sound of them chasing you. You just keep sprinting. And as you kind of turn the bend into this corridor, um, you see doors on either side as you're, you're running down, which appear to be like domiciles, accommodation rooms in this, this living area. Um, all appear to be either the doors are either closed, broken, um, as you run down, and you get about 30 to 35 foot down this, this this corridor with all these rooms and you see to the right there is um, a doorway it is open and there is um, some ambient light coming from, from inside the room keep running what are you doing? I'm going to stay behind and see, let everybody run past if they're still running, but I'm going to give them cover. So I'm going to stay in position with my rifle, and if I hear anything come down that hallway, just start lighting it up. Okay. So where are you heading? I guess I'm supposed to answer that as squad leader, but... With the ambient lighting? Yeah, ambient let's... light. Let's yeah. go to ambient light. It looks like it's friendly light. Soft lighting. Because the rest Lydia's of Lydia's got grenade in hand. She's got her finger ready to pull the pin out. She's ready to go. Okay. So you kind of book it down this corridor. Looking, seeing that the doors are either closed, so it's going to take time to open. Or the, the doors are broken open, which means that it's, it's not a safe area. You see the door open. You see the light. You kind of dive into this room, hoping that it's some form of safety or temporary shelter. Um, you dive in, and it is it is a living quarter. It's a small room with a bed, kind of a desk area, a locker and everything. Um, appears to be safe enough. Uh, the door appears to be intact and working. Um, Vic, Lydia, Magdalena and Luke, Luke being the last of the four, you guys get there jump in, Norman coming up behind, um, 
gun at the ready if he sees anything. You can hear every you can hear these creatures coming, Norman, but you can't see them um, from where you are. Um, if you want to shoot blindly, you can. If I can take one of the flashlights out, light it, and just throw it down the hallway, see if I can illuminate it. Yeah, you can beyond. definitely do that. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. So you throw the flashlight as you're kind of backing up with the in in following the rest of the group. Um, as you do it and it hits the floor and spins and illuminates, you can see these five creatures coming at you. Um, two running along the floor, one along the ceiling, one on either wall, kind of full on rushing. Can I do... Can, am I able to do a shot at the ones on the ceiling? Oh. Yeah, you can make a shot. Right. Yeah, so you do that. So you all kind of dive in this room, moving into position. Luke, you come in last and kind of prop yourself at the door waiting for Norman. Um, what did you get, Norman? Two successes. Two successes. Okay, okay. Um, and you've got the pulse rifle, haven't you? That's correct. So that's two damage. Two damage from that. Um, let me just write that down. Okay. So you shoot at them, and you manage to um, successfully hit um, one of them running, and you kind of hit it in the shoulder. It it kind of spins, drops off uh, the ground, but begins to pick itself back up. Um, you keep backing up, and you manage to back yourself up to the doorway of where they are. Luke, you kind of step back to allow Norman to step into the room. You're now all stood at the entrance to this, well, stood inside the room, Norman at the entrance, and there is a panel just to your right. A little control panel for the room. Lock. Okay, dokie. Norman, can you make me um, a straight agility? Straight agility. Ah, oh, shit. And my stress dice too, right? Uh, no. Oh, okay, just that. Okay, good. No, nothing. Nothing. Okay. So you get to the door, and you're. You type in the code and kind of click lock. And you all hear the, the, the kind of shh of the door as it begins to close. Um, and you see it kind of, it pops out, stops for a second as the mechanism kind of gets engaged after it's not been used for a while and then continues to close. As it does, you all breathe a sigh of relief. But then Norman's dragged out of the room and the door is closed. Norman! Oh, fuck. And that's tonight's episode. Oh my god! No! Why are you like yeah. this? Uh... <laughs> so, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, this was our third episode of Delta Squadron Operation Lockdown, our alien RPG miniseries. Um, so that was fun. Uh, <laughs> Why are you like this? Because it's what I do. Uh, <laughs> so again, thank you very much for those that stuck around and watched. Um, I think I think we're all having fun here. It looks everyone looks happy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, before we go, uh, a couple of things. Want to again shout out our sponsors, um, Session Zero Clothing, amazing D and D inspired streetwear. Use the code Order. Uh, for 15% off uh, Norse Foundry, Arts and Dice Makers use TIO15 at checkout for 15% off, Roaming Player Gear our very own Ray down there um, use Carnaby20 for 20% off the um, Dice Tower, Dice Tray, Dice Bolt combo set, very nice uh, Mithril Armory cannot forget Mithril Armory, our giveaway sponsors again well done to Ravenswood um, and winning the Tin Twenties make sure you please check out their Kickstarter uh, TIO dot mithralarmory.com takes you to the kickstarter page from us um, again thank you very much for watching before we go just give our players a little chance to shout themselves out before shout, well, shout out themselves um, and what they're up to uh, we will start with uh, Lydia hello um, for those of you who don't know my real name I'm Taylor I'm on Instagram at the barbarian barbie 
Um, you can also find me at my podcast, The Barbarian Barbie Podcast, where I have done episodes with both Danny and Rice. If you want to give both of those a listen, they're a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that's me. And I don't, let me see. So Ray did a fun fact last week, and it was that he can do a backflip. So my fun fact this week is that... I'm 27 and I can't do the alphabet backwards and I have never been able to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can. But I'm not going to try. Um, next up, uh, London has Luke. Let me unmute myself. That'll help. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, my name is London Carlisle. I played Luke here. Um, you can find me on Twitter at London Carlisle where you can follow all the things I got going on. Um, I'm the almost a dungeon master no i'm the keeper of arcane lore for spot hidden a call of cthulhu show so if you're into the spooky times that you know danny is masterfully weaving here i also try to do some of the same things over there um a couple of new shows coming up i just want to drop really really quickly um on the 27th i will be uh dm'd by ray here uh, our own god dm in a show um evermore tales so we're very excited for that on this channel um also again follow me Next month, I'm going to be partnering up with Paizo for a new show on their official Twitch. Um, that announcement will come soon, but very excited for that. So, all right. Awesome. Uh, next up, uh, Liz. Hi, it's me, Liz, Lizifer. Gosh, where do I start after having my heart ripped out with Nor out the door with Norman? Um, but yeah, I'm uh, Liz Lizifer. Um, primarily on Instagram, you can find me creating fantasy art um, digitally and physically, which I like to update online, but also to, um, I also stream with Meta Initiative, and I'm happy to be with the Initiative Order family. Yay! Uh, next up, Ayla. <clears throat> if I can unmute as well, that'd be great. Um, Ayla here playing Magdalena. You can find me on Instagram at Assistant Ayla. Um, I just play tabletop RPGs and whatever else comes along. And I'm happy to be here with the Initiative Order. So that's about it. Short and sweet. Awesome. Uh, lastly, Ray. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Ray with God DM. I play Norman. And I'm in danger. <laughs> um, let's see. I got a couple things. Uh, next or next week, we're doing Evermore Tales. Uh, you do not want to miss this show. So uh, I'm not going to give too much, but uh, be ready. Uh, the other thing I've got going on. Let's see. WizKids just sent me the new uh, the new mini series or the minis for for the next ones coming out in the month of July. So we'll see what that is when I release it on the channel. Other than that, I play tabletop role playing games and I make things out of styrofoam. <laughs> awesome um, so yes um, we have a lot going on with the initial order with quite a few people here um, our next stream is on Monday and that is our uh, vault uh, show uh, our fallout RPG uh, campaign that's on every Monday uh, make sure to tune in check that out and then check our social media because as you've heard we have a, a lot of new things coming uh, very soon um, so be sure to check out that because we have a lot of uh, promos and trailers and all sorts of cool stuff dropping um, beyond that our next session of Alien is tentatively booked for the 16th of July um, so you're going to have to wait a little bit to see what happens um, but we'll definitely recap you and bring back the stress levels very quickly for everyone here um, again thank you very much for watching and yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace.